Hello, today I'd like to show you how to make a little bag using the PVC coated fabric or oil cloth. Um, they're similar, they're not quite the same product but similar um, and it's a little bit difficult to sew sometimes so I just thought I'd show you how to do that and what I'm going to show you here is what I call that little shopping bag. As you can see it's not very big if you were trying to do your week's grocery shopping you're probably having a pretty lean week but quite often that little person that might be coming to help you might like to have their own little shopping bag or you just may need a smaller bag which of course never goes astray. So this is a, a PVC coated fabric that I've got here and I've made this bag out of that fabric um, but I've got another one here that I'm going to show you with. The one that I've already made up here isn't so shiny. The one that I'm going to sew today is quite shiny and it's also got a little bit creased. So there's a little bit of a question about ironing because you can't iron straight onto the PVC because it will mess up your iron, it will melt, all those things. But we're quite fortunate because we've got a cotton back. So as, as you can see, this is quite crinkly just here. So I'm actually just going to iron it from the back. Now you don't want to hold the iron on too long and melt the PVC or anything, but you can actually press the cotton side of it. So you can see then that those little crinkles will largely just be removed from there. And, and that by not ironing on this side, everything is sitting quite nicely. So I'm going to just show you the cutting. So because of the cotton bag, um, I'm going to lay it right sides together for cutting because if I lay my ruler on the PVC, it just can either get really slippery or it might grip awkwardly. Um, it's just not as easy to use. So where possible, we work from the cotton side. So I'm just going to line that up with the markings on my board and I'm just going to trim off the selvages because I don't need those. And by laying it on the cotton side, it's just the same as cutting any regular fabric. So I've trimmed off my selvages. Now to make this little bag, I need it to, I need two pieces that are 11 inches wide. So again, using the markings on my board, I'm going to come across and I'm going to cut it at 11 inches. And I also need two strips that are three inches wide. Now I've got a third of a yard of fabric here, so that's about 12 inches or so which is fortunate because we want them to be 12 inches long, these pieces. So I'm cutting the handles three inches wide I'm, and we need two because there's two handles and we needed two pieces for the bag because there's the front and the back. And then there is actually quite a large piece of the fabric left over and I can show you something a bit later that we might be able to do with that. And these bits now need to be cut again. I need to turn them around because now I want them to be 12 inches. So hopefully your third of a yard is a slightly generous 12 inches because then you can get it out but it wouldn't matter if it was just slightly under it isn't reasonably approximate sizing so I'm just going to trim off that edge there and then I'm going to cut it over here at 12 inches so that the bag pieces are 11 inches wide by 12 inches tall and it's reasonably important if you've got a one-way design that you get that round the right way you don't want your bag being the wrong shape. So here I've got two, piece, two pieces for handles that are three inches wide by 12 inches long and two pieces for the bag that are 12 inches high by 11 inches wide. Now we're going to make the handles first. Now because you can't iron we're going to rely quite heavily on finger pressing. So to make the handles, I just fold in a quarter of an inch or so and I just finger press that. That's one of the good things about this PVC coated fabric. It presses with a finger reasonably well and it also doesn't fray. So we don't need to worry about edges fraying and things like that, which is great. So there's one handle done. I might just do the other one while we're here. So a quarter of an inch or so finger pressed in. You can pin this fabric, although you don't want to put too many pins in because you don't want to leave too many holes. But if you're feeling a need at some stage to do some pinning, that's pretty much okay because we're sewing through it, we're piercing it with the needle and things and it just seems to be okay. So I've folded those two edges in. They're not going to sit flat, but now I'm just going to fold over that folded edge to meet that other opposite folded edge. 
so that our handles are going to end up just over an inch wide and about 12 inches long. Now I'm going to take that to the sewing machine and sew that. Now sewing on this PVC coated fabric can be a little bit tricky. I have actually on my machine got a Teflon foot so if you can if you have access to a Teflon foot that's a really good idea. If you don't have access to one it may you may find that your normal foot grabs and it doesn't feed evenly. If that's the case there's a couple of things you can do. You can lay just some regular tissue paper underneath and that will help that glide through or you can use something like some cornstarch or in my case I've got some baby powder just here just a little bit you just pop, pop a little bit on your hand and rub it onto the fabric now don't go sprinkling it all into your machine I'm very scared that your machine would get clogged up so just rub it on the fabric on the shiny side and then you'll find that that should glide through quite nicely so I'm going to take that to the machine now and I'm going to sew roughly an eighth of an inch away from that folded edge, from the double edge that we've turned in there. And so it should just get, once you get going, as I said, it is a little bit tricky to sew, but it will go through with a little bit of extra care and attention. Sounding a little bit like a truck that's probably because of the PVC. So you'll find you probably will need to replace your needle after doing this sort of sewing. Now I want to do both handles while I'm here. So I might just do the same thing on this one. Just a very small amount of powder. Just rub it. It just allows it to glide through better. And I'm going to pop that one straight through. So you can see that's sewing quite nicely. And I'm going to come back down the other side. Again, approximately an eighth of an inch away from the folded edge and that just gives a nice finish on the hand as well. So it just might require a little bit more patience when you're sewing with this sort of fabric. wasn't so bad. So now I've got two handles ready to go and we need to start getting the bag. Now I have actually done a pattern for this bag. It is available on my website. It's called That Little Shopping Bag and it's available to purchase and download and it, it's made using these um, PVC coated fabrics. So if you're wanting to make some of these bags yourself the, bag, the pattern is there on my website. Um, so now I'm going to start working on the bag. I can set the handles to one side. Now this time we shouldn't have any trouble with the feed because we're going to be sewing with the cotton sides out, the right side, the plastic side together. And I'm going to sew all the way around three sides. So I'm going to leave, so remembering that it's slightly taller than it is wide, so leave the top edge open and sew along the three sides. Again, just use your, th your quarter inch seam allowance.
make some nice little um, corners. I think they're called paper bag corners, so that we've got this nice flattened shape along the bottom of our bag. They're not hard to do. What we need to do here is pop your hand inside and bring, you want to bring this bottom seam level with this seam here. So by feeling it inside you'll be able to feel with, you want to flick one seam one way and one the other so that again those seams will neatly sit together, that should just butt in together. And then you can open that out. Can you see? And we're going to sew across. So approximately two inches in from that point we're going to sew a line. Now if you wanted to measure that and be sure from the point, not the point of the fabric, but from the point of the little bag there, you would be sewing two inches here. So just make sure that's sitting together quite nicely. Back to the sewing machine. And sew across right right the way across that corner. to do a little lock stitch, reverse stitch and things like this. So you can see that's going to sit quite nicely. We are going to trim that off shortly but we'll just do the other corner first. And if your seam is going that way, keep it going that way and flip the other one the other way. And again by just finger pressing that seam open inside there you can usually feel to butt that together. Feels pretty good. And check that we want to do sewing at about two inches. So I'm going to come in there and come all the way across. was that and we have wonderful little flat corners for our bag so you can see that's going to sit quite nicely now we don't need those bits flapping you can leave them on if you want to but I usually just trim them off because this is a non-fray fabric you can just trim that without it being any problem at all it's not going to fray or go anywhere just a quarter of an inch away and there we've got a lovely little flat bottom bag. Now what we're going to do is do the top edge and we want to turn, maybe it's just as easy to turn it in the right way at the moment. And put the little corners out and see how it's sitting. And I think that's sitting really well. That's cute. This is such a cute fabric. Um, now we're going to turn over approximately one and a quarter inches. It really isn't terribly exact. And the same thing as we did with the handles, we just need to finger press that because we can't iron this. So, all the way around, try and keep it much the same. You can use a tape measure to check if you're not sure how you're going. As I said, about an inch and a quarter over the top. And then we're going to position the handles before we do the sewing. We're going to sew twice around the top, near the top edge and near this cut edge. But we're going to include the handles in our sewing. So to do that, we may just find we need to pop a little marker in now. So maybe a little pin would be helpful. So bring your side seams together so that you can find the center point of the front and the back. And here I probably would pop just a little pin in there. and one on the other side as well just as a marker because now we're going to pop the handles in place so here's the handles that we'd already made now we're going to I used my board a lot for my measuring you want about three and a half inches between the handles so you want to come out from that center mark about an inch and three quarters and because my board has got little quarter inch markings, it's very helpful. And I'm just going to place that, so this is one inch, and then 
three quarters. So I want to line that inside edge up with that and I'm going to line the bottom edge of my bag with that edge of the turning of the fabric. And I am going to pop a pin in there just to hold that in place. And now I'm going to bring that handle round and I'm going to do the same thing another inch and three quarters out the other side from your centre marking. And again we'll pop a pin in there. So you can see this bag doesn't take very long to make. And we'll just do the same thing with the other handle. Just need two more pins ready. Okay, so we went an inch and three quarters either side of that centre marking. And bringing that level with that turned over bit with your handles there so that it all sits nice together. And I'm going to go back to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew through it. Now we're back on sewing with the PVC against the machine and things so I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit of this powder just very very lightly. You don't want a great deal of powder, you don't want it getting into your machine and clogging it up. So just a tiny bit, just to give it a smoothness. And just inside as well where you're going. Probably whatever's left on your hand is just enough to give it that little bit of a run. So now I can take those marking pins out because they're just going to get me, I know they are. And now I'm going to go back to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew all the way around, fairly close, about an eighth of an inch in from this cut edge including the handles. So just get your handle underneath the sewing machine and I'm probably just going to start for no particularly good reason at one of the side seams and I'm going to lock my thread off an eighth of an inch in from that cut edge. And when I get to these pins I'm going to take them out because they're going to get me for sure. So don't be afraid of using these um, PVC fabrics or the oil cloth but do be aware that you probably will need to take just a little bit more care with it few aspects of your sewing. You probably need to have a needle to replace your sewing needle at the end of it because the PVC will blunt on your needle. You may find that it gets a little bit sticky but overall just take it slowly and you'll probably find that you have no trouble at all. Maybe a little bit of cornstarch or baby powder or something like that or some tissue paper to lay between PVC in your machine and you just tear it away afterwards. You can make some cute little purses and hats and coats and all sorts of things these days. Okay, so here we are, back at the beginning. Just take that out and I'm going to do another row of sewing yet. So just kind of snip my threads off. And one more row of sewing and we'll be all done. So, back in the machine. And this time approximately an eighth of an inch in from that top folded edge. And again, including the handles. So hopefully they're sitting nice and straight on there. Now if you think the bag's going to get a little bit of extra wear on these handles, you might just want to do a little back stitch on the sides of the handle just to give it a little bit of extra strength at that point. I often do that because it's the one area that can pull away. The 
fabric's great for uh, bags and things, also for aprons. Um, needing a, an apron that you don't want to spill. Um, back to school things, pencil cases and things like that. Okay, and that's it done. How great's that? Here's our little bag. This is a lovely fabric, so cute, and I'm quite sure that a little person would love to take that one shopping. Now I did say to you that I'd, um, you want to have a quick look inside that bag, you can see that all my edges are still, are just cut edges, but it's not going to fray, so there's no problem just leaving them like that. Uh, this is all very washable, this PVC fabric, um, so as long as you don't iron it, really, it's the heat that's the problem more than anything else. Um, and I did say that I'd mention what you can do with the leftover piece of fabric because you've got quite a sizable piece left out of your third of a yard. And uh, if you're any good with the zipper, that would probably be quite helpful to you at this stage because you can pop, pop a zipper in there and make... I've made one here out of the leftovers from this bag. Make yourself... I've called it a pencil case. In this case, I think it would be great to keep things like my rotary cutter in, all sorts of little things and to take around like that. But of course, for pencil cases, um, for those who need pencil cases. So that's just another idea. And that idea is also on the pattern and it tells you how to make that. So remember that pattern's on gourmetquarter.com and the pattern will show you how to make the pencil case and the bag. Today we've made the bag. And I'm just so excited. I just love that bag. I just want to go shopping now. Thank you.